we give you praise we give you glory so pastor felix is ready to share god's word with us and the word session is streaming live on our facebook page joy fm facebook page let me say good morning to you, man of God. Good morning, my brother. How are you, please? I'm doing good. Praise How God. How about you, sir? Very well, by God's grace. And thank you for Monday and yesterday. And I believe that this morning, God has a word for his people yes, through sir. you. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for the opportunity always. The Lord bless you for the great work you are doing, both on AOV and joy time in his presence. Father, breathe upon your word again in Jesus' name. Now, dear listeners, I greet you in the name of the Lord. We started on a journey from Monday and we looked at the beauty of redemption. And then we continued yesterday on understanding our redemptive rights in God. Today, I, today I'm, I'm coming to you with a word from God that will make you shout wherever you are. Now, the Bible, the Bible said in Psalm 107 from verse 1 to 5, he said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. I've captioned today's theme, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, you, you, you need to understand. I want you to take your pens and your paper, write something, because nuggets of truth are going to come to you that you profit from the rest of your life. In Psalm 107, the psalmist that had so much revelation into God said something. He said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. He said, for his good and his mercy endure forever. Then in the verse 2, he started the discourse. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. He said they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of their distresses. The emphasis I want to lay today is uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now when God gave me this word, just around this dawn, around 2 a.m., I was looking at this same word in other translations of the Bible and it's exciting sometimes when God drops a revelation you can get several confirmations as you do further studies on it now the New Living Translation of the same scripture says this. He said, has the Lord redeemed you? NLT of the same 107, Psalm 107 verse 2. He said, has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak it out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. Did you hear that? In, the, in good news translation of the Bible, he said, repeat these words in praise to the Lord. All you whom he has saved, repeat these words in praise to the Lord. All you whom he has saved, he has rescued you from your enemies. Then the message translation of the same scripture says, All of you set free by God, tell the whole world, glory to God. Tell how he freed you from your oppression. Then the NIV says, let the redeemed of the Lord Tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. And God's West translation says it this way. He said, let the people of the Lord defend. Let the people the Lord defended. Let them repent the words. Now, these are various translations of the same way, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The thing about what God has done for us is that we have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We have been redeemed back to our place of glory, honor, dignity, and power. But the honor is, is on us. As the Bible said through the psalmist, he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In other words, let them give expression to it. Let them declare it. Let them confess it. Let them sing it. Let them declare it. Let them attest to it. Let the redeemed of the Lord make it a habit, a profession of declaring what the Lord has done for them. I checked through the Bible and one package of redemption that God had for us is captured in Psalm 103 verse 1 to 5. The psalmist that had a revelation about how to sing. He said, let them sing those that God has redeemed from the good news translation he said from the good news bible he said repeat 
repeat these words in praise. Repeat these words in praise to the Lord. All you to whom he has rescued. The psalmist had a lot of revelation about God. So in Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5, he summarized it in a beautiful song. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forgive Get not all his benefits. Don't forget we are talking about the riches of redemption. What are the benefits? He said, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, uh, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, uh, that your youth is renewed like that of an eagle. The danger about forgetting what God wrought for us is in redemption is that you you stand the risk uh, of losing the benefits of redemption you see when you don't talk about something for a long time you lose you lose the force and the authority of that particular thing so the psalmist said i he said bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul let everything that is within me bless his name and what is the contest the contest of redemption he forgiveth all our iniquities he healeth all our diseases he redeemed our life from destruction. He crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Glory to God. He, the Bible said he, re, he satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like that of an eagle. Forget not all his benefits. You stand the risk of forgetting the benefits of redemption if you stop talking about it. You know when God brought out the children of Israel out of Egypt, that was a form of redemption. Redemption when they came out, you know, in Egypt, Moses did everything to bring them out. There were many signs and wonders, signs of nature, wonders of nature. The, the rivers were turned to blood, flocks were released upon the land, and all manner of miracles. But but Pharaoh would not let them go. But when the last stroke of miracle, that was the, the blood of the lamb, that was sacked, the shed, and put on their lintels and their doorposts. The Bible said after that, Pharaoh was urgent upon them to leave. Now, that is a type of redemption. And when they came out, there was a whole book called Deuteronomy that God charged them. And that book just meant remembrance. It means that whatever God wrote for us in redemption, we are supposed to remember. We are supposed to talk about it. He told them, talk about them when you lie down. Talk about them when you sit in your house. Talk about them when you are on the way. Talk about them when you are with your children. Write them on your doorposts and on your lintels. You see, you stand the risk of losing the benefits of redemption when you don't talk about it frequently, daily, hourly, and every time you stand the risk of doing that. Now, so when he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, what does he mean? Number one, what, number one way you do that is through songs. Songs. And I'm, 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 I'm going to show you a few things that will excite you today. Listen, in heaven... In heaven, the songs that we know are, are sung are the songs that the, the four elders, the 24 elders, and the four be sing. They say unto God, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, he who was and who is and who is to come. Now, that is the song we pop popularly know. But in heaven, there are two notable songs that are sung in heaven. It is called, they are called the song of Moses and the song and the song of the Lamb. So in Revelation chapter 15, verse three he said and they sing look at present continuous and they sing the song of moses the servant of god and the song of the lamb saying great and marvelous are thy works lord god almighty just and true are thy ways thou king of saints so you see even in heaven the song they sing they are songs of redemption they are songs about what jesus did for us they are songs about what the blood did for us they are songs about what was wrought on the cross for us. Listen, my brother, learn to sing songs of, of redemption. You see, that is that, that 
That is one of the ways you appropriate and benefit from the package of redemption. They sing a song. They sing a song. They sing songs to attest to what the Lamb did for them. Listen, whatever your situation is, this morning we were talking about the spirit of discouragement and heaviness. One of the things you can learn to do, he said, is, is any merry, let him sing. As you sing songs of redemption, the cloak of heaviness, the cloak of depression, the cloak of discouragement will be lifted from you this morning. Those songs are songs that testify about what Jesus did on the cross for us. In Revelation chapter 5, from verse 9, he said, and I heard a great voice, a great voice, and they sang a new song. Listen, they sang a new song saying, worthy is the lamb. He said, thou art worthy, thou art worthy to take the book and to lose the seals, for thou was slain, and you have redeemed us unto God out of every kindred, out of every tongue, and out of every nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So in heaven, the songs they sing, they are songs of redemption, songs of, of, of the redemption, songs testifying about what Jesus has done for us. Beloved, may you from today begin to sing those songs to him. He said, let them sing those songs continually repeat those words of praise to the Lord all you whom he has saved and rescued from your enemies so that is one of the ways that the redeemed of the Lord can express their redemptive package the second one which is so exciting that some of you will start laughing wherever you are right now is, is in Job chapter 5 how many of you know that by reason of redemption we are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above principalities and powers he said, and ye have been quickened, who were dead in sins. He said, by grace are you saved. And he has raised us up. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. He has raised us up and made us to sit together with him in heavenly places. I'm excited in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 in the NIV. He said, we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. And in heaven, this is how they even do warfare. This is how they appropriate the benefits of salvation. In Job chapter 5, verse 20. 22, he said, at famine and destruction, thou shall laugh. Glory to God. At famine, famine and destruction, thou shall laugh. You see, listen, listen. The Bible said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. He said the wisdom of God, the foolishness of God is wiser than man. Now, and the ways of God are not the ways of man. So in heaven, one of the ways, he said, he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. By redemption, we have been positioned on the laughing side of life permanently. Redemption brought us to the laughing side of life. You see, the laughing side is the victory side. The laughing side is the winning side. The laughing side is the overcoming side. So in heaven, God laughs. He said, why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine a thing in Psalm chapter 2. He said, the kings of the earth set themselves together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, we'll have them in redition. We'll cast their bones in sander. He said, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. I don't know where you are seated, but if you are born again, washed by the blood of Jesus, raised up together with Christ, then you are seated in heavenly places. And one of the ways we are prayed, our benefits of redemption is when we laugh at opposition. We laughed at famine and destruction. I had a beautiful story about the patriarch Kenneth Hagin. Now, this patriarch was, was was afflicted before he, he got to know God. He was afflicted with, with a blood disease and a heart disease, a heart condition. Now, when he was healed, after some time, the symptoms came back heavily upon him. And he said, when the symptoms came back, he said they were very dangerous symptoms. And when they came back, the Bible is, he said in his own testimony, he said when they came back, he began to laugh. Ha, 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 ha. He began to laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Then the devil told him, why are you laughing? He said, I'm laughing at you. I'm laughing at you because Jesus took, he took my sicknesses. He bore my diseases. He carried my pains. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. I, I am healed. I am healed. He said, ah, ha, ha, ha. He 
began to laugh. He said the enemy withdrew. The symptoms lifted and then he got his restoration back. Listen, my brother, if you want to live on the permanent side of victory, you must learn to do what they do in heaven. One of the things they do in heaven is to laugh. Let me ask you a question. Do you know what the Bible said? He said, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? You know, when you go to a hospital and they give you a clean slate of health and you are leaving the hospital, you are smiling, you are you are laughing, you are happy. But if they give you, you know, a very dangerous diagnosis, you don't come out laughing, you frown, you are not happy. But listen, the report of the cross, the report of redemption, the report of the blood has, has, has given us a clean slate of health. The report of the cross is the report of victory, is the report of overcomers. And listen to me, my brother, that is the report that you need to believe. He said, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord repeat? So when you laugh at, at calamity, when you laugh at destruction, when you laugh even at, at, at seeming contradictions, what you are doing is that you are affirming the report of, of redemption. Listen, I don't know what you are going through right now, but one of the prescriptions for the redeemed is to laugh at whatever challenge that comes their way. Come on, go ahead and give God a laughter. Ha, 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 ha. Number three thing that they do in heaven concerning their redemption is the Bible said in Revelations, in Revelations chapter 12, in Revelations, before I come to chapter 12 of Revelation, this is what they do again in Revelation chapter 5, when they sang the song saying worthy is the lamb that was slain to redeem us back unto our God and after they sang he said and they cried with a loud voice they cried with a loud voice they cried with a loud voice saying worthy he said he said worthy is the lamb he has received he has received unto us power wisdom riches blessing glory honor, strength, and blessing. They say it with a loud voice. So the Bible, the Bible is saying, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, here, they were not only saying it quietly. You see, some of you are redeemed by God, but you are quiet about it. Let me warn you, a close mouth is a close life. A close mouth is a close destiny. If you cannot declare it boldly, you will, it will not be designated unto you. Your mouth is the channel for the release of all the all the, the, the benefits of redemption. Are you hearing me, somebody? So what they said, they, and they sang with a loud voice. They sang with a loud voice. What is that? They were doing declarations, confessions. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That is what they did in heaven. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 9 to 12. They cried with a loud voice saying worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power. Listen, you cannot whisper it. You cannot say it gently. You cannot say it under tone. He said they said it loudly. In Acts chapter 14 verse 3 this is what the Bible said. He said long time abode day speaking boldly in the Lord who gave testimony to the word of their grace by granting that signs and wonders was were done by their hands. Listen, you better start declaring boldly, I am redeemed of the Lord. I am redeemed from the curse. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. And for it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. I am a partaker of the blessings of Abraham. I am on the, on, I am planted and grafted on a new root. I am a partaker of the fatness of the olive tree. Listen, you have to declare it boldly. You have to declare it boldly. Conviction makes you declare boldly. There is an exciting scenario in heaven. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 to 11. He said there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought. He said, but he prevailed not. Neither was there any place found for him anymore in heaven. Then he said, they said, then the great dragon, which is called the devil, which is the old serpent, the one that deceived the whole world, he was cast down with all his angels. Then the, the angels discussed, said, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. You know, he said, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. He that accuses them daily before our father. Then in verse 11, they said something. Wow. They said something which is beautiful. He said they overcame him 
by the blood of the lamb but listen listen i know you know that one but he said but by and by the word of their testimony the word of their testimony what were they testifying to the testimony of the lord is the spirit of prophecy what were they testing they were testifying about the blood about the redemptive work on the cross they were testifying about what jesus did they were testifying about the work of the cross they they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony my brother you better begin to begin to declare it boldly what jesus did for you and i you better begin to say it on the housetop he said according as is written we i believe therefore i have spoken we also believe and therefore we do speak you know the bible said jesus christ is called the high priest of our confession the high priest of our profession so when you begin to declare boldly what he has declared you give to your high priest something to offer and listen Listen for the believer, everyone that is born again. He said, he that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, the wind bloweth where it listeth. You hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell from whence it cometh, nor whither it goeth. He said, so is every man born of the spirit. So the sound we make based on the revelation of the scripture carries the energy of heaven. So when we are declaring the works of redemption, when we are declaring what Christ has done on the cross, it carries the energy of heaven, which is capable of bringing to pass any orders or instructions that we give to it. Glory to God. So you see, your sound is not empty sound. It is heavenly electricity. In the supernatural, sound is very important. Let me tell you, a sound Soundless Christian is a signless Christian. If you don't make sounds based on the revelation of your redemption, you will not see the signs of your redemption in your life. They will not come to pass. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let them say so. I want you to begin to declare it wherever you are. Why do you need to declare it? Because there will be contradictions. Even though you are born again, even though you are saved, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. But why are you going through what you are going through? Why are you going through challenges? Listen, they are contradictions. They are, he said, seeing therefore we are encompassed, Hebrews chapter 12, with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that that so easily beset us and let us run the rapid patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame. He said, consider him that endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint. So the reason why you need to begin to declare boldly is that there will be contradictions to the work that, that Jesus did. Contradictions. So when you begin to declare boldly, the contradictions must give way to that which has been done on the cross. Are you hearing me, somebody? When you, number two thing, the reason why you need to begin to declare boldly is that there are oppositions. What is called in 1 Timothy 6 verse 20, he said, oppositions of signs. Paul was speaking to his beloved son Timothy and said, my son, hold that unto that which is good, avoiding vain and profane babblings. He said, and oppositions of signs, falsely so-called. So there are oppositions to that which God has declared. You see, God says you are healed, but you are carrying an ailment. It is an opposition of signs, but he said it is falsely so-called. So when you begin to declare boldly that which has been done on the cross, one thing happens. The opposition begins to give way. He said, as soon as I speak, strangers will obey me. Strangers will fade away. They shall submit themselves in their close places. Psalm 18, 44 and 45. So when you begin to declare boldly the work of the cross, the opposition must surrender. Are you hearing me, somebody? Listen, you cannot keep quiet. I have given you three nuggets today. You cannot keep quiet. Begin to sing about the redemption. Begin to laugh and talk about it. Begin to proclaim it in heavy declarations. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places far above principality and power. I am the head only and I'm, I'm not the tail. I am above and I'm not beneath her. Listen, he says, Suffer not your mouth to cause your body to sin. Neither say before the angel it was an error. 
lest God be angry at the voice and destroy the work of your hands. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6. So when you don't speak, he said to the law and the testimony, if they don't speak accordingly, it is because they are not wise. Isaiah 8 verse 18. Listen, you must begin to speak boldly concerning that which has been done on the cross, concerning your redemption. And as you begin to speak, you release your angels to work. As you begin to speak, he said, are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them that are heirs of salvation? As you begin to, to speak, they begin to work. As you begin to speak, the opposition bows. As you begin to speak, you give God what to work with. Isaiah 44 verse 25, 26, he said he performed the counsel of his messengers. Go ahead and begin to declare right now, I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am redeemed from sickness. I am redeemed from pain. I am redeemed from disgrace. I am redeemed from destruction. I am redeemed from famine. I am redeemed. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all my diseases. He let all my, in my he forgive of all my iniquities. He let all my diseases. Redeem of my life from destruction. Crown them, my Lord, with loving kindness uh, and tender mercies. Begin to sing about it. Sing about it. Talk about it. When you are sitting down, when you are rising up, when you are on the way, don't be shy about it. Declare it boldly and you will see them manifest in your life. I declare today, as you begin to hear the voice of God and the command of the scriptures, may you begin to see the works of redemption evident in your life. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.